Hi everybody, it's Miss Cristobal. We're back in science, properties of materials. Today we are on chapter four, lesson two, making final glues. In the first activity of our lesson, we will complete tests and record the results. So as you can see, here's our design goals poster. I know in the last lesson, that you chose a fourth property that our glue should have for making a picture frame. And then I also remember that you designed and made glues to meet all four design goals. So you can see in our poster, here are the goals for our glue. It must be sticky, it must be strong, it must be thick, and it must dry clear. So today we will test to see how well our glue met the design goals. So I'm wondering what ideas do you have about how to set up a fair test? to find out how well the glue is holding the craft sticks together. Think back to our past learning and past lessons. What it could be your idea for setting up a fair test? Here's my idea. We could pick up the sticks, shake them gently three times, or gently pull at the top stick. Now you're going to need this page in your packet. This page is called Our Glue Test Results. But don't worry if you don't have this page. Just go ahead and grab a piece of paper and something to write with. I'm going to read the directions out loud, so go ahead and follow along. Here are the directions. Number one, observe how well the glue held your sticks together. Two, answer the two questions using complete sentences. Three, then record your other design goals in the table below. Four, complete the table with evidence that each design goal was met. And lastly, if your goal did not meet a design goal, put an X in the third column. So I want us to focus on these first two questions. I put a bracket around it so we can really focus on that. First question says, what do you observe about your glue? Here's what I wrote. Our glue is thick, smooth, has no odor, and sticky. The next question says, what properties does your dry glue have? I wrote, our glue is clear. Make sure you take some time to observe your glues and respond to these two questions using complete sentences. Now let's move on and talk about how to complete the table below. So as you can see, there is a circle around the first two design goals of being sticky and strong. And there's a big arrow pointing to evidence that the goal was met. So let's focus on this arrow. What would be the evidence that glue met the goals of being sticky and strong? And what would, what would be the evidence that it did not? Here's my idea. It met the goal if the six stayed together after we completed our test. It did not meet the goal if the six fell apart. So if it met the goal, that's something that you can write in the second column. And if it did not, remember, you can always just put an X on the third column. Now we're going to think about the other two design goals that we came up with. Do you remember what the third design goal was? That's right. It's to make a glue that is thick. And the last design goal us to make sure that to, we make a glue that dries clear. So let's go back to this third design goal. What evidence could we use to figure out whether our glue met these other design goals? So what could we say as an evidence to find out if our glue is thick? Here's my idea. Our observation of the glue is thick when we applied it on our sticks. As you can see on the picture on the left, there's a tray of materials and our craft sticks. So our trays today have materials for testing and materials for a different activity. Right now, we will only be using the materials for testing and not the others. So go ahead and just take out these two materials where the arrows are. Now it's your turn. Test your glue for strength and stickiness. Then test it for being thick and dry clear. Record your results on the page titled, Our Glue Test Results. Go ahead and pause this video to test your glue and record your results. I hope you learned something by testing your glue and recording your results. Let's move on. So 
So I'm wondering two questions. Why do engineers use design goals? And what do engineers do if they haven't met their design goals? They use their design goals to know whether they have successfully completed their project. And if they haven't met their design goals, they go back to the learn phase to come up with new ideas. I'm wondering, did your glue meet the strong and sticky design goals? Did it meet the thick design goal? And finally, did it meet the dry, clear design goal? And which ingredients help you get the properties you wanted? Sometimes it is not possible to meet all the design goals at the same time. When that happens, engineers decide which goals are the most important. Engineers make sure they meet their most important goals and they do the best they can to meet at least some of the other goals. In our second activity today, we will engage in a thought swap. Now we will be going back to the learn phase of the design cycle. We will do a thought swap so we can learn from each other. Here's my question. What ingredient or ingredients do you think will best meet your design goals and make the best glue for our school to use? And what is your evidence? So go ahead and jot down your ideas. You can pause the video, jot down your ideas, write your evidence, and talk with somebody around you on what you were thinking. I hope you were able to jot down some of your ideas and talk with somebody about it. We're moving on to our third activity. In this third activity, we will revise our designs and make picture frames. All right, so now you are going to need this page in your packet. This page is called Our Final Glue Recipe. So you will decide what mixture of ingredients will best meet the design goals, and then write your final glue recipe on this page. I'm gonna read the directions out loud and follow along. Again, don't worry if you don't have this page in your packet. All you need is some paper and something to write with. Our final glue recipe. Directions. Number one, complete the sentence to tell what your design challenge is. Two, list your ingredients and circle how many spoonfuls you will use. Three, then predict how well your glue will do in the picture frame test. So as you can see, I already filled in the first part. It says, my design challenge is to make a glue that is sticky, strong, thick, and dries clear. So those are just listing our design goals for making a picture frame. The next part is a table that lists down what kind of ingredients you would use, what are how many spoonfuls you will add, and lastly, you will predict how well your glue will hold together your picture frame. All right, so now it's your turn. Decide on your final glue recipe and record it in this page. You can also make your prediction on how well your glue will hold together your picture frame. So go ahead and pause this video and complete this page. You've got to make and fill in this page of your final glue recipe. Here's what we're doing next. Next, we will make our final glue. Now we can use the glue making materials on our tray. So cup, some craft sticks, spoons, and your glue recipe. Here's how to make our final glue. There are three steps. Feel free to pause at each step and continue on as you see fit for you. I'll read it out loud. Step one, look at your recipe to remember how you plan to make your glue. Step two, measure each ingredient you chose and add it carefully to your cup a little at a time. And lastly, step three, observe what happens as you mix, each, as you mix in each ingredient. What does the mixture look, feel, and smell like? So go ahead and pause your video as you complete this step, as you complete these steps when you're making your final glue. Now we will use our final glues to make a picture frame. So here are some steps steps like making picture frames with our glue. Like the, the earlier slide, go ahead and pause your video at any time as you're completing these steps. Step one. Line up two craft sticks with almost a stick's length between them. Write your name on one of the sticks. Step two, using a stir stick, 
spread a small dab of glue near each end of both craft sticks. Step three, place two more sticks across the top over the dabs of glue to make a square and let your frame dry flat. So this is, these are the steps to making your picture frame. I'm gonna show you how I made mine and how it looks like. Show you how my picture frame looks like as it's dried. So as you can see, I use four different craft sticks. I connected them this way, and now it's ready for the next step. In this slide, you're going to learn how to put a picture in your frame. Step one, draw a picture in the middle of your paper, leaving space around the edges. Step two, using a stir stick, spread a small dab of glue on each frame corner. Turn your picture face down and place it on the glue. Leave flat on the tray to dry. And lastly, step three, when the frame dries, we will turn it over. The picture will be showing behind the frame. So again, just like earlier, pause the video at each step or as how you see fit while you're going through it. Engineers who design mixtures have many failures, but they eventually get closer and closer to making a mixture that meets their design goals. We have learned a lot about ingredients. We planned and made different glues, and then we tested them to see if they met our design goals. Now we have designed what our evidence tells us is the very best glue recipe. And we used our glue to make a picture frame. That's the end of our lesson today. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you got to make some really awesome picture frames. I'll see you next time. Bye.